Hi, I'm Colin Hunter and on today's episode we're going to be showing you how we built the foundation of our passive house. It's a slab baby. It does three things. It's our foundation, it's our first floor framing, and it's also our finished floor. Let's go! When we first came to the property, we th thought that that was the flat ground right over by the hydro panel over there. Uh, the people we bought it from were planning to build over there. I don't know if they were planning to build on a slab though. When we started digging away, we said, oh, there's a rock up here. And uh, oh, it seems to be continuing. And as we progressed, we found out that this is just bedrock, a huge chunk of it coming to a peak right smack in the middle of where we were gonna build. We came up with the secondary solution. The solution was to exchange where the septic system was gonna be with where the cottage was gonna be. And at the end of the day, we're really happy with how it worked out. We've situated the pad on the north side of the lot, leaving this as the clearing for our septic area. And now the lake will be to the north and you won't even see your neighbor who is south of you. Uh, you were also talking to potential suppliers and researching passive housing and talking to architects and you know, really kind of getting into the, as you said, the planning Yes. So what we're going to do. So a lot of the planning was around, well, what is the most cost effective way to build a, a very energy efficient house? And so we determined that the concrete slab is an efficient way because this slab will be our foundation, our first floor framing and our finished floor all in one nice, easy step. The only thing about that easy step is there's a lot of prerequisites that have to go in. We have to make sure everything we need underneath that floor is in and in the right spot before we do that because we only got one shot at it. You told me you worked kind of hard on the weekend to get this ready too. Uh, my wife was scared I was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> All right, so this day didn't exactly start off on a great note. We stayed up till midnight the night before putting in our Stego wrap, which is the 15 mil vapor barrier that went underneath. And it looks great. We got it all sealed up 100% and we really wanted to take our time doing that because being airtight is one of the most important things on this build. But it turns out that whoever did the rebar takeoff, the quantity amount of rebar, I think only did like one way of rebar and not the other way of rebar. So we needed 105 pieces of rebar last minute. So that added a little bit of pressure. We raced, we got the rebar, all the guys pulled together and put it all in on time. Um, but then the concrete truck was late and we had scheduled this job for when it was gonna be shady in the morning. So basically everything arrived at once and 
was just kind of like concrete truck waiting after concrete truck. Just an insane amount of pressure for the direct hot sunlight of the day. Oh, hot day in the sun today, doing the concrete. We've got our first couple, first couple trucks are in and our rebar's in. Why are you doing that? I don't know. It's ridiculous. All right, so what are you doing here, Mike? <laughs> do this to me. <laughs> How was this experience for you, sir? I don't think anybody wanted to talk to me on my crew for like at least 12 to 24 hours after the pour. <laughs> uh, so that was one of the longest concrete pours uh, I've ever had. We could have used a couple more guys as always, and uh, but it's looking sharp. Grind a layer off that and polish it, it's gonna look so good. Ooh. Welcome to our foundation. The concrete slab serves as our structure, our foundation. It's also our first floor framing in one swoop. It's also gonna be our finished floor once we grind the surface and polish it. And it also serves as thermal mass. Thermal mass means that this will retain energy, hot and cool. It will balance the temperature of the cottage. It's wrapped in six inches of EPS foam from Thermapan, and we've also gone with a 15 mil vapor and air barrier from Stego. Air tightness is key when trying to achieve passive house levels. The average house has about six air changes per hour, which means the air in your house is exchanged with outside air about six times an hour. We're trying to hit 0.06. That's the minimum that you can have for passive house. So now they've installed the beautiful vapor resistant barrier from Stego and the lovely EPS or expanded polystyrene. These are both key essentials in locking in the heat during the winter and preventing heat loss as well, preventing anything from escaping, which is really essential to lowering heat costs and lowering the carbon footprint. Also, this guy is filled with air, so it's also a globally conscious foam. This wrap goes underneath of our concrete, wraps around each pipe and every protrusion. Doing the forms took quite a bit of work because we're kind of shoehorning this in between a set of ledge rock, a boulder, and a big old tree. So trying to figure out where square was and also maintaining our distances from the lake took a, took a few shots anyways. Pythagorean theorem was in full effect. So once we leveled out the entire area, it was necessary to dig out a two foot perimeter around the entire thing down at an additional depth of eight inches. We then do a rebar beam in the concrete and the edges of the concrete are ridiculously strong and even the center is way overbuilt. But you know what? A few thousand bucks of material and you get something that's just built like a tank. The forms are simple. They're only one board at the top, back filled with sand. Our EPS foam ends up being the form that actually holds the concrete. We put all the EPS foam in and then spray foamed it together. And then our Stego wrap goes on top of that. It's a lot of steps and it's a lot of work, but this builds a great home. We're also using this concrete as a finished floor. So not only do we never ever have to want to chisel concrete, but we also want to make sure that this has options for the future. I ran three inch plumbing lines everywhere in the master bathroom so that that could be changed. You can use something for something else down the road if you want to shift anything around. So we've poured all our concrete and that is a really essential part of this building envelope. That's a key part of passive housing because we want to keep everything as tightly wrapped, tightly insulated as possible, locking in the warmth in the winter time and keeping it cool in the summertime. Heating costs are crazy in the city. It's about 64% of energy consumption is just heating alone. That is all done away when it comes to passive housing. It's so much better for the environment and for your pocket. 
Oh, hi. Nice seeing you. Come on in. Welcome to the house. This is the foyer. Um, watch out for the walk-in closet there. It, it'll get you every time. Would you like to sleep in guest room A, which is over here? As you see, it's quite spacious and you have your own ensuite bathroom with walk-in closet. Don't, don't fret. You've got one too. Let me go into this room. Same exact thing. Here's our next. Oh, look, where am I? Right now I'm in the laundry room. I'm going to do some laundry on some beautiful machines that I bought at a discounted price before the build even started happening. What a view. No, there are no upper cabinets because we've allowed these windows to allow the sunshine to come in and heat up our concrete slab. And then the master suite. Beautiful and room for a king size bed, a fireplace, great windows that see the view. And then we enter the ensuite bathroom. What's that I see? A freestanding spa tub. I could go for a dip in that. What's that? A vanity with windows and mirrors? That's both. What could be better than that? Well, the men just said, I don't want to take a bath. I want a stand up shower. Well, that's what I'm doing right here. No big deal. I can't believe that it's only been about three weeks since we've had our building permit. We've already done all the excavation. Everything's been cleared, plumbing's in, and now we're installing the finished floor. That first grind has revealed how beautiful this is going to be. It truly rocks. Give it take. Good morning, I'm Todd Baker from Northern Concrete Refinement and Polishing Company. Um, today we're out here exposing for the build we are on, 2,500 square foot. Um, we're going to be exposing the maximum aggregate um, by cross-cutting a 25 grit single sag rhombus. On this floor, um, we like to get on them seven days after the pour um, so we can get down a lot easier than we would when uh, full cure comes about. We'll be cross-cutting this and then densifying it after. That will harden the concrete, trap the dust in, and basically create a better canvas for, uh, for polishing. Once we do that, we'll come back after the full 28-day cure, which is about two and a half to three more weeks, and uh, we'll bring this up to a northern uh, touch finish, which is a 8,000 grit finish, one of our high-end finishes. So let me just show you guys what we're doing. This here is our H. HTC 500 planetary grinder. It's got three heads on it. We're running a 25 grit single sag rhombus diamond. Um, we're gonna go north, south, east and west on this slab. That'll help flatten the floor, any high spots and low spots from uh, when the floor was finished. Basically, this grinder starts with as low as a six grit diamond and we progressively work up to uh, some higher grit diamonds and then we get into the polishing stage of things. This beast will do everything and then some. That's that water. This uh, water pump's winning, winning the war. I'm doing what many cottagers have had to do, usually right before company comes up or something, the water pump doesn't work. In this case, we're installing a brand new water pump. The concrete cutting guys said, well, we want to start on the seventh day, but we need some water. Now, I had to just kind of grab whatever pump I could get at the hardware store last night. I tried to get a three quarter horsepower self priming pump, but I would have bought a different brand. This is kind of like, uh, reminds me of a kid. You got to fill up the entire line all the way down to the foot valve. The foot valve is a one way valve that holds all the water in the line. Kind of like when you put your thumb on a straw and keeps it full. Well, this thumb is at the bottom. Pumps don't really like to pump air. Some of them are better than others with that and they almost do prime themselves. Eventually they'll suck all the air out and then get to the water and really start pumping. Uh, but in this case, we pretty much have to fill up the entire 120 foot line all the way to the lake. But the easy way I don't have to go to the gym tonight, right? <laughs> weekend at the cottage, getting water pressure back <laughs> after a night of drinking can be like hitting oil. That's the good stuff. Susan really wants to flush the toilet.
This part of the job is extremely messy, but it gets us to where we need to be. You can put a shroud on here to clean it up, but it does bog down the machine. It keeps everything cool this way. Trip the breaker. Oh, look at all the colors, eh? We got a bunch of different types of stone. Even that fool's gold looks like it's even in a couple of them. Yeah, everything's from the granite quarries that are very local here. And it's all just pieces of crushed up granite. So you get all sorts of different. You get the pink, the blue, yeah, no. the gold. Todd, there's gold in this floor. Yeah, there is. It'll cost you extra. That's a minor enhancement. Yeah. Okay. Gold jokes. Exactly. Prospecting. So how's this floor ranking up for one of your This is going to be so probably one of the best. That's what we like to hear. Okay, can we just talk about that concrete slab for a second? That slab looks incredible. I'm always telling people, if you don't wanna to have to replace a finish in like 10 years, then use something natural. I don't think that that's gonna go out of style in 10 years. I think it'll be something that in 20, 30, 40 years, you look at and you say, that's so cool. That was poured back in 2018. And man, they had 2020 vision back then, I guess. All right, we now got the slab made for our cottage. That's one of the biggest steps. Now all we need is a wall, a roof, a kitchen, a couple bathrooms. There's a lot of steps, but I hope that you join us for it. Let's go!